Hi, today I'm going to be presenting what happens to the moon as she goes through each of the signs in the zodiac. My name is Michael Bartlett, Master Metaphysical Astrologer, and I offer metaphysical astrology and experiential coaching to help you find profound self-transformation and empowerment. Check out my website, coremichael.com. Today, we're going to have the exciting experience of seeing how the moon changes as she goes through each of the zodiacal signs throughout each month. She's our satellite, our fastest moving point in astrology. And so she is a very important part of each of our charts. When we speak of the moon, first and foremost, it's good to know that the glyph we use looks like the crescent moon in astrology. She spends about two and a half days in each of the signs of the Zodiac, and she takes a whole 27.3 days to complete a full cycle around the Earth, roughly a month or a lunar month is what we call it. The moon is our satellite and reflects back the sun's light back to us. She is the planet that most represents our emotional nurturing self as well as the nurturing parent that we grew up with. The moon affects the earth's tides and therefore our human emotions. And so we can see why it links in that way. And it is the first planet to lay the track for our experience around the zodiac. Our first 28 days of life really set up that idea of how life is going to look for the lifetime. And if you were born at night, it is going to be more prominent for you than your sun sign would be. And as I talked to you last time, what we're talking about with the Zodiac is it's a band of constellation that goes all the way around out in space beyond our sun. So when we look out from our earth, we see the sun and on the other side of the sun are those other stars that are out there. And that's where the constellations lie within a band called the eclipse. So what happens when we have moon in Aries? Moon in Aries is a very interesting, uh, instinctual, fiery present. We see this woman dressed up in armor in Roman soldier's outfit, and she's ready to go out and fight. And she's got her sword behind her back, kind of off to the side. You can see it's there just in case she needs it. She's got a stance kind of like, you know, come on, bring it on. What do you want? And she's in this dressing room. So this is kind of the costume she chooses. Her first choice is to, is to kind of be guarded, yet not necessarily guarded in a sense, but it, it's a need for being guarded because being ruled by Mars, it, it tends to bounce its head a lot. So those of you with prominent Aries placements can sometimes end up with a lot of nicks and bruises over your lifetime, especially, you know, getting cuts and scabs and getting hurt in that way. Blessings, so to speak. I'm thinking the French word for it is what they call it for being wounded because Aries is just going so fast. So emotionally, when you have someone who has an Aries moon, this is a person who is likely to fall in love with you very fast, very passionate, very strong. The flame will burn very bright, but it might not burn very long. So you have to see what other sort of planets are working with the moon in order to give a better picture of what's going on here. Then we have the moon in one of her favorite signs, the sign of Taurus. You can see she's kicking back on the sofa. She's relaxing. She doesn't have to worry about biting. She doesn't have to worry about pushing into things that maybe she doesn't really need to be pushing into. She's just enjoying herself. People with Taurus moons love luxury. They love comfort. They love good food. They love beautiful fabrics. They love good sheets on their bed, good blankets, nice pillows. There's a luxury aspect to someone who has a moon in Taurus. When the moon moves into the sign of Gemini, she gets off that sofa. She gets on her fencing outfit and she's ready to go out and have some fun. She's ready to get out there and meet with her friends, talk, make connections. When you think of each of these, the moon is representing the ways in which we want to also be nurtured and connected with. So for an Aries person, that nurturing thing might be to go on a hike or go and do something. Tourists might be sitting around watching TV or eating, you know, sharing cake together. Gemini moon person will say, hey, tell me how you've been. What's been going on? Let's let's communicate. Let's share what we're doing and maybe even take a walk at the same time because that'll really help move the energy.
Then we have the moon in cancer. The moon rules cancer. She is very happy here. You can see she's carrying the baby. She's got the bottle. She's in her cozy home. Cancer moons people tend to have almost like a round moon face. Actually, a lot of these signs when it comes to the moon that shows up on a person's face, but especially cancer moon people, they tend to have what I almost call like a full moon face. They tend to have a very round, happy face. Comfort food's really important to them. So for them, for a nurturing part is maybe sitting on the sofa, sharing some cookies, playing with the babies, talking about what's going on with the family and the extended family. These would be things that would be really nurturing for someone who has a cancer moon. When she moves into the sign of Leo, she gets out of her house coat. She gets rid of all the things of taking care of the children. And she steps into her artist studio and she starts to create. Anyone who has a Leo moon is going to be needing and wanting sorts of creative expressions. This is the artist studio. How do I create things? With it being fire, I would say especially things that in artwork that involves fire. So like kilns, making jewelry or ceramics, firing ceramics, or even working with glass I've seen. It's like, it's going to be really well indicated. So these, each of these things I'm kind of talking about too, are these ways in which the moon can be recharged based on wherever your moon is in the chart. And if you're not sure of where your moon is in the chart, I really recommend you going to astro.com. It's a free website, enter in your birth information, your other information, and you can look up and see where your moon is and you can see how this places with it. Also, if you want to, you can send me email at michael at coremichael.com. If you give me your birth date, your birth time, and your birthplace, I'd be happy to give you um, the information on where your moon is. So then the Leo moon, which also wants to be adored and loved. You can see like the lovers in the background and, and time and the fates and the issues that go on with creativity, the life and death aspect in a sense that goes on with it. And, and also this way of creating a sense of being loved and being adored is really important for that Leo moon. Then when she moves into Virgo, and when I say she, I'm just using that as an archetypal reference for the moon because we typically look at her as a she. Regardless of whatever sex you are, this is kind of like the energy. Sometimes she's a little more masculine, a little bit more feminine, but overall we see this as a very receptive emotional energy, which we usually align with feminine energy. Now that she's in the sign of Virgo, what makes her really happy is making sure that Everyone around her is taken care of. The house is neat and orderly. Projects are being managed. Lists are being made. And, and when all the work is done, relaxation can occur. Virgo is a mutable earth moon. So she can move heaven and earth to get things done, especially for those people she loves. I just want to give great thanks to Christine Cianci, who hand painted all of the Astro Theater figures, which I'm working with here in this video. And you can find our book called Astro Theater on Kindle, Apple, and in physical form from your local bookstore. Here are the ISBN numbers. If you're liking the content that I'm offering, please hit like, please share, please subscribe, please comment. I love interacting with you. How do you feel about this information I'm sharing today? How does this feel against what you know and feel about your moon or what you've heard about the moon in astrology? I would really love to hear from you. Thank you. Then the moon moves into lovely Libra. You can see she's kind of got slinky dress going on. She's dressed to attract and be interested. She's going to want to have relations with people, but she's going to want to make sure that things are always pretty, well put together. One thing you'll see over this time as I go through each of these planets, through each of the signs, is you'll see that there's almost a developmental understanding of growth. So she just got done going through the sign of Virgo where she got everything 
everything in order. Now she's all dressed up and ready to go out and have fun, to go out and meet others and to say, hey, what would it be like to date? If you look at this image here in the back for this figure, we can see the scales here. We can see the man and woman entering into matrimony or some sort of an agreement. They're doing a handshake. And then this one in the middle has a sword to her back. So it's that way that you really don't quite know, as most of us have lived on the planet long enough, what true intentions might be for some people. We can enter in with good faith and find out that the person really has malintentions towards us. And, and that's why you have to be really careful sometimes with people and, 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 and allow them to earn your trust. Trust shouldn't just be automatically given. It's something that is actually earned. That Leo moon also, I would like to say, is an air moon. So the best thing that that air moon can do is to pause, to take the time to review things, to see, oh, do I really want to do that? Because as we know, with Libra being sort of, there are two sides to Libra and, and she'd be kind of wanting to please people all the time versus wanting to please oneself. And so if the Libra moon person actually just takes a pause and once you fill into yourself, you'll actually be able to tune into what it is that you really want to do. And then that's really valuable and important for how you you want to move forward. Then we have the infamous Scorpio moon. Dun, 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 dun. Scorpio moon. We are talking about intensity. But as we speak of this, I want to let you know that the moon also represents our mother and or the nurturing parent that we had growing up. And so each of these can kind of be a reflection of the type of mother we have. So if you are fortunate enough to have a Scorpio mother like... <laughs> There's a nice Freudian slip. <laughs> if you happen to have a Scorpio moon like I do, it indicates that you probably had a very um, challenging and painful experience in, with your mother. And regardless of who she is or how she is, that's just going to be the way it's going to be. There's just going to be a, oh my God, just there's a lot to say here. But I would just say that it's just really not an easy thing. But as time goes on, it really kind of grows on you. You learn the benefits of having a Scorpio moon are that you get to have really deep and beautiful conversations with people. People are drawn to you for reasons that sometimes are very clear and sometimes take a little bit of time to figure out but they're always very deep and they're very interesting. So that's what I would say on the Scorpio moon. Then she takes off her sunglasses. She takes off all that black and she moves into the idealistic adventure seeking question asking sign of Sagittarius. And she says, Hey, where are we going next? In order for me to feel good, I need to be asking you questions. In order for me to feel good, I need to be traveling. Where are we going next? Are we going to go to see the Taj Mahal next? Are we going to go and see the Great Pyramids? Are we going to go and see Machu Picchu? Somewhere fun, somewhere exciting, somewhere mind expanding. Let's talk about philosophy. Let's talk about higher understanding. I need to go get an education for me to feel better. These are all the things that would be going on for a Sagittarius moon. One thing that's very fascinating about our moon is it does something with the sun that are called eclipses. So these lunar and solar eclipses usually happen about two weeks apart from one another. The moon is the perfect size and distance from our sun to create a full solar eclipse, meaning it completely blocks the light of the sun from wherever we are on the earth. So if you look at the image on the right here, you can see this is where they're both lined up. This is an Aries sun and an Aries moon lined up with earth. And whoever is living down here where this dark sp space is right here, this darkest shadow, is going to be seeing a full eclipse, whereas these others are going to be seeing a partial eclipse. It's kind of how the energies work. This is from NASA, by the way. That's a little bit of additions for me. Lunar eclipses are all about culmination, revelation, and transformation, often bringing hidden truth to light. This is what we call the full moon. The lunar eclipses, on the other hand, here on the left, are about culmination, revelation, and transformation, often bringing hidden truth to light. Solar eclipses are about bringing new beginnings, major shifts, and cosmic reset. They are the new moon, of course, the new moon phase. Then we move into the very pragmatic and practical sign of Capricorn, where she is going to be taking care of things as she needs to, being very discreetly. One thing I've said to many of my Capricorn moon friends over the years is 
when a crisis happens, you're amazingly good at managing all the issues that are going on, regardless of what's going on, holding your head together, keeping your feet firmly on the ground, regardless of what's happening. And then soon as the crisis is over, then you completely decompensate and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. Capricorn moons are incredibly resourceful. It's not one of its happiest places, but I have to tell you, some of my best friends are Capricorn moons and I love their consistency ruled by Saturn, of course. The next moon ruled by Saturn, she takes off her judge's robes and she moves into the sign of Aquarius where she's really ready to rise above it all, observe how people are doing, maybe not get into the fray when there are arguments going on, but kind of step back or rise above and see what is the truth about what's going on and then make observations. But the one thing with the Aquarius moon is it's got to really be careful that it's not making decisions or understand emotional understandings that aren't true. So it's important for them to sometimes climb down from the ivory tower, ask some important questions and find out whether their perceptions and other people's experiences line up with one another. Finally, we come to the sign of Pisces, the last sign in the zodiac. The moon here is actually, I believe, very helpful, very liminal. As you can see how she's dressed, she's carrying a crystal ball. She's wearing a diaphanous gown. She's in an ossuary, a place where bones are kept back in the old days in large cities because they didn't have space for cemeteries. Monasteries are another example for this kind of a space, the deep sea, of course, for Pisces. So this is a deep feeling, very sensitive person who has a Pisces moon. All the water moons are going to be very emotionally centered, very traditionally emotionally centered, meaning crying at sad movies and when events happen. Pisces moon is going to be very sensitive to other people's feelings and things. They have to be really careful when they walk by other people that they don't pick up other people's energies. It's really important to do cleansing and other things to keep that Pisces moon clean and happy. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you like what I've presented today, please hit the like button. Please share with your friends. Please comment. Please check out my website, coremichael.com. Schedule a reading. I am here to be of service. Thank you so much for tuning in today and have a great day.